IO Texting partnership with Tenvis have just announced the new UCAM, and it's the world's first blockchain powered home security camera. And we've got it. In the box, we get the micro USB cable to power the UCAM. A USB plug socket, but it is a two pin plug, meaning that if you're from the UK, then you will need a converter. Screws and a mount. A couple of IOTech stickers. The documentation to help you set it up. And a couple of recovery cards to write down your private key. And the camera itself. It is black in colour with a silver trim and it's made out of plastic. It stands approximately at a height of 4.2 inches, the width is approximately 2.6 inches and the depth is 3.4 inches and it weighs 8 ounces. It has a 3.6mm f2.0 lens with 8 infrared LEDs which allows a night vision range of up to 36 feet. The Wi-Fi is 2.4GHz and the security is WPA and WPA2. It has two-way audio and the microphone is located on the front near the top and the speaker is where you can see the U symbol which is also on the front. Tilting the head upwards exposes the micro SD slot and the reset button. On the back there is a 100 megabits per second Ethernet port, the micro USB port to power the camera and the Wi-Fi antenna. There is also the option of attaching the included mount so you can screw it onto a wall or ceiling. When you first power the camera, it will go through the boot up sequence and the head will begin turning on its own. Once it's complete and it's the first time using the camera, you will hear this. Welcome to UCAM. Which means that it's time to get the UCAM app installed on your mobile phone. Once installed, you will be asked to add a new camera or if you're already a UCAM user and you have your own private key, then you can sign in with that. Once you've heard the welcome to UCAM, then you can press the blue power button which will prompt you to put in a password for your wireless network. Once you've done this, you will receive a QR code which you can scan using the camera itself. This brought no issues for us and it connected straight away. The next screen is where we will name the camera. Once you're happy with this, press the finish setup button. This is where the magic happens as the camera begins to create a unique encryption key. It's good practice to make a copy of this key and make sure there's only you that has access to it. Once you're happy, click the I've recorded the private key button and you will now move through to the setup for the deregistration. What this is, is if you lose your encryption key and you need to register the camera again, this allows you to deactivate your old account and for a new account to be put onto the camera. Once complete, we have the main screen of the app where you can select your camera. You'll be asked for permissions on your phone to allow UCAM to access files from your phone. Accepting these shows you what the camera can see. By default we're on 360p for the video footage and by tapping it this will turn it to 1080p mode. The arrows let you move the head of the camera and it moves in increments. We found that when you press the arrow keys it kept saying we was pressing them too quickly. We had a much better experience when we actually swiped across the screen to move the head of the camera. And we found this move quicker as well rather than using the arrow keys. The button that looks like a clock which is just underneath the live view screen is to watch the recordings that are stored on your memory card. An issue we found with this was that there was no thumbnail for the previews and you would need to open the video file first and once you come out of the video the thumbnail would appear. We had occasions where the video would look as though it's loading but it would do nothing but coming out of the video and reloading it resolved this. You can narrow the search of your video files with a tab that's at the top of the screen you can either use the default options or you can create your own custom search. The bell looking symbol is your events button and this lets you access your cloud storage. You automatically get a cloud account which gives you 3 hours of video history and 10 seconds per recording. Which basically means that if your camera detects activity and you rely on the cloud storage to view it. Then you will need to watch this video within 3 hours of the incident being captured else it gets deleted and you no longer have access to it. There are extra cloud storage options available if you require and if you pay the cost off yearly then you can save some money. Playing back footage that's saved in the cloud allows us to delete the video, share it on apps like WhatsApp and we can save the clip directly to our phone. If you play back footage that is saved on the micro SD card then you don't get any of these options. Wondering about the encrypted micro SD we decide to take it out of the camera and see if we could access the files. Windows detected AVS files and they were all just over 100 meg each. We tried to load them up in media player and VLC but it wouldn't allow us to view anything. We installed AVS media player but we still had no joy when it came to viewing the footage which means that the encryption is doing a decent job. 
But that made us wonder, because if we needed a backup of this footage from the micro SD card, then how would we do this? Image quality of the recordings are okay. They look pretty much like any of these other style cameras, and the microphone is the same. It's pretty muffled, but you can hear what's going on, and the two-way audio works well. This is a very quick audio test using the UCAM. We've got a little bit of light coming into the room, so this is what the, the daytime mode looks like. We've hit the record button in the UCAM app, so we're recording directly from the camera to the mobile phone. And this is the kind of image quality you can expect using the night vision mode on the camera. It does automatically switch between day and night mode. There's no option that I can see anyway in the app where you can configure it yourself. So once the camera detects a not enough light, it will flick over from day mode to night mode. Excuse me, but can you leave the premises? Excuse me, but can you leave the premises? Jumping back into the settings of the app, a few useful features that you get are the motion detection schedules, where you can turn off motion detection completely, have it always active, or you can set custom days and times for it to be active. There's four levels of detection sensitivity, which you can change to suit you. The detection zone allows you to only be notified if there's movement in a certain area of the image, which is very useful if you're getting a lot of false positive alerts. The push notifications will send a notification to your mobile phone if it detects movement of any kind, and we found this to work really well. If you mount the camera to a ceiling, then there is an option to mirror and flip the image so it's the right way around. The last feature to note is the share feature. This allows you to share the camera with friends and family by scanning the barcode, but we couldn't get this to work. Scanning the code just made our phone vibrate and nothing else. We tried for about 10 minutes to scan the barcode, but it just didn't work for us. Overall, the camera performs pretty well. Apart from the big selling point that is the blockchain technology, this camera doesn't really offer you anything different from any other camera that's on the market. But if you do want that secure encryption, then this is the only camera on the market that will give you that.